Hi everyone, I'm Jessica. Welcome back. Today we're working on block 31 of the 2023 Scrappy Stampler. Let's get started. This block has two components to it, half square triangles and diamond in the square. So let's make the half square triangles first. We need four of these. We have the two triangles cut out. Just like we have in all of our other blocks that have half square triangles, I'm placing the one on top of the other and I'm matching them up on every side. And then I'm going to sew on the long diagonal. And when we're finished with it, I'll just finger press it open and we'll trim these little overhanged edges on both sides. And this half square triangle is made to size, so there's no trimming of the final half square triangle. We need four of these, so I'll make the other four. But let me show you the next unit. The next unit is a diamond in the square, and we made this a couple times last week, so you're gonna be familiar with it already. I have my center square, and I have my four smaller squares. I'm going to use the 1D foot for making this. And basically, it's the same method as making uh, flying stitch and flip flying geese. We're lining this square up, the small square, along with the corners of the larger square. And then we're going to sew from this point to this point. If you wanted to, you could draw a line from this point to this point with your ruler and a pencil. However, what I'm using here are the markings on my machine bed uh, and the marking on the foot to eliminate that step. So I'm lining up this top corner with the needle, which is also in line with this straight line that's in the middle of my foot. It's a little bit difficult to see, but it's there. And then this line here is the line that is lined up with the needle. So if I keep my back corner on the line that's lined up with the needle and my front corner right under the needle and lined up with this portion. Now you might have to um, lift your presser foot a little bit just to make sure you have everything lined up and then Start slowing, sewing slowly, and then once your fabric is feeding through nicely, you can speed up a little bit, and we're just gonna sew along that, you know, diagonal there. Then we're gonna turn the block around and repeat that step on the other side. Next step is we will trim off these edges, leaving a quarter of an inch uh, seam allowance behind. And then we're gonna sew on the following two squares. So if you'd like to press with an iron at this step, you could, but if you're having problems with your blocks distorting, I would just try to finger press here. Finger pressing kind of eliminates the iron based distortion so if your blocks are not turning out and maybe like you don't know why try finger pressing and just see if that will help eliminate your problems a lot of the times it will and now you can press at the end but i mean a lot of times when you're making the components of the block you can eliminate the step the pressing step by just finger pressing and that can yield a way more accurate block depending on you know if you're if you're struggling to begin with now if you're you know an old pro at pressing and you're not struggling um, you can continue there's nothing wrong of course with pressing as you go that's just fine but um, if you are struggling uh, with getting the blocks to lay just right, then try finger pressing and just see if that helps you. It will take a little bit to get used to working with blocks that aren't pressed, but I always find that the results to be way more accurate. So here is our diamond in the square. And you know, it's not laying perfect just because it's not pressed yet. When we sew it into the block, we'll press it. But it looks, um, it looks nice. And we need actually need five of these for this block. So I went ahead and I made all five. And then we have our half square triangles also. And we are going to work on assembly now. I switched back to my 57D patchwork foot and we are going to start assembling the block. So for this block, we're gonna assemble it just like a nine patch. 
and our first two things that we're gonna sew together is a half square triangle with a yellow facing in and one of the diamond in the square. So I'm just lining everything up and I'm gonna take a couple of stitches just to get it situated in place and then I'm gonna line up. When I'm sewing here along this line, I'm making sure that I'm not going over this point here that will cut the point off of the front. If you sewed um, your block perfectly accurate, which doesn't always happen, you won't even have to really think about that. It will just work out for you. But if uh, there's some little bit of errors, which there are in most blocks, you, you just have to be careful you're not sewing over that point. Now the next two things we're going to sew together in this are two of the diamond in the square blocks. Now these get a little bit bulky just like we had last week. So you just want to be aware that they can be a little bulky. If you want to sew with a scant seam, you can do that to try to eliminate, um, you know, reduce the bulk. You won't be able to eliminate it, but you'll be able to reduce it a little bit. You can do that. And then the final um, two pieces that we'll sew together in this column are the another half square triangle with a yellow facing in, or your color, whatever color you used, and another diamond in this square. So this block is a little bit, like I said, it's a little bit bulky because it has so many diamond in the squares. Uh, but I just think it's so beautiful that I had to include it into our quilt along. And now we can open this up and we're gonna add on the last column. So I have another half square triangle here that I'm matching up to this middle one. And when you're, when you're working with it like this and the um, diamond in this square is down, it's a little bit hard to tell if you're gonna go over that point or not. Um, but you just have to, uh, you know, feel it with your fingers and just be careful. So our last diamond in the square is going to go right here. And I'm going to match these up. And then the final piece we need to add is the last half square triangle that's remaining. This is what we have so far and we need to sew these last two seams so let's go ahead and do that um, here is the time when you want to assess your how your points look so for these blocks often people opt to press these seams open which means to find the seam so this is the seam in between and to just you could do this with an iron or you can finger press this for now flip these open like this uh, which will like take half of the bulk and put it this way and half of the bulk and put it that way just so it's not all lumped onto one side and that usually produces a really nice looking point on the front Then you'll do the same assessment on the bottom and just see open to one side, which do you want to do? Thank you. 
Then we're going to flip the block around and now we're going to work on the other side. Just remember whatever directions you pushed your seam in when we were sewing the first seam, you need to push them in that direction as well. so that um, all the seams are going in the same direction and everything is laying nice and flat when you press it later. And here is our block. We just need to press it. Okay, so I have our block here that we just made. I'm gonna flip it over to the back and we're gonna start working on it. I'm gonna work um, from the corners to the sides and we'll do that first and then we'll work our way in. So as I'm going here, I'm just making sure the seams are laying how I want them to lay. And then I'm pressing If you sewed with your seams open, uh like I I ended up sewing these two seams open so I'll show you how to press those in a minute and then you have another choice to make here um, if you're gonna keep open or not the two long seams the last seams that were sewn on the block you'll have to decide if you want to push these entire seams open uh, like like I did here or if you'll want them to go to one side and I find that the best way to do that is to just uh, do a little bit uh, like of, of testing so you'll want to see you know if you take your seams and you push them right now I have them pushed that way how does it look does it look okay like that I'm okay with the point that looks great let's check in on the other side this one I don't have lined up very nicely but I'm just gonna leave it because my two seams are correct so you'll have to decide based on how that looks if you want to press those seams open or not. So here in these two middle, I press them open. So I just like split it with my finger a little bit and then I hover above it with the iron and push the iron down on the open seam. You can use the tip of your iron to help you um, split those open and keep them that way. So you can see here, this one's pressed nicely and um, this one just needs probably just a little bit more pressing. And once you have those seams pressed open, then you can go like we usually do and uh, flip to the front, set this whole side seam. If you were going to press this seam open, you would want to just work from the back just like we just did. But I am going to press this to a side. So I'm just going to start doing that from the, um, you know, from the front like this, just like we did before. And then I'm going to repeat that on this other side here. I'm just going to close that seam up, set the seam with the iron, and then I will just gently open it up with my iron. Make, sh make sure the seam allowance is going in the correct direction with my fingers. And then just press along this long seam. And there's our block all pressed. And here is block 31. So I hope you had a fun time making this. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer. And I will see you back here next week for the next three blocks. Thanks for following along.